Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this week I'm going to show you how to make a multi-layered, beautifully highly textured print for collage paper in shades of blue utilizing a stencil, a mask, a rubber stamp, and some simple splatter. So if you've got a few minutes, let's go check it out. Welcome back. So today I'm going to create a blue gel printed paper for collage and I'm going to use a few of my own designed elements plus golden fluid acrylics, my gel press gel printing plate and my absolute favorite rice paper for the gel plate which is this pad of sketch paper that's available on my Amazon shopping list. Actually all of these supplies are available on my Amazon shopping list and that link is going to be in your upper right hand corner. So the reason why I really like this sketch paper for the gel plate is that it's rice paper, but it's very durable and it's not going to tear when you pull it off the sticky surface of the rice of the uh, gel plate. So the, um, the surface of this rice paper on the side that's facing up in the pad is very smooth. It has sizing on it. The back side is a little bit rough. So it's the smooth side that you want to put down on the gel plate. So this side of the paper that's up in the pad is the side that you want to put down on the gel plate. This is the absolute best rice paper that I have found for the gel plate and it's great for collage as well because it's so absorbent that it glues down beautifully without any wrinkling. Not to mention you can take wet watery uh, paint application and soak it all the way through the center of this rice paper and then when you tear the pieces you will have colored edges because if you soak the color all the way through and you cannot do that with any other kind of paper other than this highly absorbent paper when you water down paint and paint it on the back side it soaks all the way through to the front and then when you tear the paper you have colored edges so let's get started with this blue print so I uh, really like blue it's one of my favorite colors and so I gravitate towards the blue color palette uh, often when I'm making gel prints. So the colors that I have here today are teal, golden fluid acrylic, which you can see by the swipe of paint on the front of the container is completely opaque. You cannot see any black tick marks underneath that swipe of paint on the front of the container. So this color will go over dark colors because it's opaque. Unlike manganese blue, where you can see the tick marks through the paint, this is a highly translucent paint color. So this will not go over darker colors. So we're gonna use this for our base layer. Then our second layer is gonna be ultramarine blue because that's darker than our base layer and it's a little bit more opaque, but you can still see the tick marks through it. Then my third layer is anthraquinone blue, which is still transparent, translucent to a certain degree, but it's much darker than the previous two layers. And then last but not least, I'm gonna give a little splatter on top of this paper, and I'm gonna do it with a metallic because metallics are iridescent, and when you turn them to the angle, they are, trans, uh, they are opaque, and you cannot see the tick marks through. You can sort of see the tick marks when I turn it like this, but when the light hits it, you cannot see the tick marks through. So this is also a color that will go over dark because it's opaque. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with two sheets of the manganese blue light colored solid because the stencil always gives you a ghost print. So it's good to have two sheets ready to go. The second sheet may not give us the results that we anticipate in the first sheet, but it'll give us something interesting as well. So we'll start with two sheets of the light colored manganese blue solid. So I'll just put that paint out on the gel plate. I'll roll it around with my brayer. I've got some previous blue going on in the plate, but I'm not worried about that. That just adds to the interest of the print that I'm making now. I'm going to take that smooth side of the rice paper and put it down onto the plate. And I'm going to press to make a good connection. And because that smooth side and because this rice paper is sturdy and rigid, we should be able to pull all the color off the plate and get a nice light colored solid print. So you can see by the way I'm pulling this paper, it grabs onto the plate. So you don't want to use any thin or um, tissue-like rice paper as it will tear. So there's my first light colored solid. I'm going to do that again with my manganese blue, rolling it out to 
a nice thin layer across the whole eight by 10 gel plate. Then I'm gonna take the smooth side of that rice paper and put it down into the paint. Again, applying pressure and rubbing around all the edges so we get a good connection with the plate and we pull all the manganese blue up onto this rice paper print. So here's our second light manganese blue print. So the next print that we're gonna do, we're going to use the next layer is the ultramarine blue. This is a blue that's sort of like a periwinkle. It's slightly on the purple side. I'm not gonna worry about cleaning out my brayer from the manganese blue because it's gonna be blue with blue. So we're just gonna let that blend together. And I'm going to make a print with one of my stencils that I designed for joggles. And this is called Peacock Pods. And I'm going to be using this one because it has a nice open shapes, but also thin lines. So I'm going to put the peacock pods, thin lines, right onto the plate with the paint, the ultramarine blue paint. And then I'm going to take one of my manganese blue base layers and print on top of that. Again, I'm using my fingers and the heels of the palms of my hand to make sure I've got good contact between all the spaces in the stencil. Before I take the stencil off, I'm gonna look and see if I need to apply more pressure anywhere that didn't make a good connection. So before you dismount the paper, take a peek and make sure you've got a good print. So that's good, and that is a darker layer of blue on top of the manganese, and that is quite a lovely high contrast print. So now I'm gonna use the ghost print of this stencil. That means the ultramarine blue paint that's trapped beneath the mylar of this stencil. I'm gonna lift up the stencil, grab that second sheet, and print while it's still wet. That's why it's important to have two sheets of the light manganese blue to start. So now I've grabbed the ghost print and I've got two different effects with this with the stencil the peacock pods I've got the very bold graphic print and I've got the second more painterly ghost print so now as we are working from light to dark the next layer that I'm going to do is going to be the anthraquinone blue because it is darker than the previous two blues and we are layering to create a rich highly textured print so the anthraquinone blue I am going to combine with a bigger chunkier stencil that I designed and this one is called Fiddly Ferns. So it's the combination of the thin lines of the peacock pods with the thick chunky spaces of the Fiddly Fern stencil that looks nice together layered. So we're going to add this anthraquinone blue which is a darker blue than the previous two layers of blue and we're going to roll that out with the brayer and this is a really nice dark blue and we're going to do the fiddly ferns stencil on top and then we're going to take the first print that we made with the peacock pod stencil and now we're going to be adding another layer of a yet a darker blue onto that print so the same process, rubbing it with your fingers, the heels of the palm of your hands, and taking a sneak peek before you dismount to make sure you've got good contact and a good print. So the Fiddly Ferns is a really fun sort of mid-century modern pattern that looks great with the peacock pods because it's a chunky pattern with a thin fine pattern. And I designed these stencils to be layered. So the thin fine pattern of the peacock pods looks great with this chunky fiddly ferns. So now we've got a nice double layer of the fiddly ferns, darker blue on top of the peacock pods. I've still got a little bit of paint in those spaces. So I'm just going to grab a scrap piece of paper and get some more paint if I can out of the spaces so that I get a really good ghost print. So I'm just using this as a cleanup sheet to sort of Make sure I've got all the paint out of the openings. And then I'm gonna get that first ghost printed sheet ready. I'm gonna remove the fiddly ferns and what's left behind is my ghost print that's gonna go over this print. So here I'm gonna have the dark anthraquinone blue ghost print over the peacock pods ghost print. Look at that. I just love this fiddly ferns stencil.
So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come back with this opaque teal because it will go on top and show up over the dark blues because it's opaque. So I'm going to use a um, rubber stamp of my own design from Rubber Moon, this uh, big flower, some daisy flower. And the reason why I love the rubber stamps is because they have really nice fine line detail. And I think that fine line detail will be a nice contrast over and on top of the chunky fiddly fern. So I'm going to put the teal paint onto my gel plate and I'm gonna roll it out and use my gel plate basically as a stamp pad. So I'm going to stamp into the gel plate and transfer onto my print over here. So I'm going to take my teal stamp and press it onto the print over here. And then I'm going to press it into the plate and stamp. And I can move and make a second stamp for a slightly lighter pattern, but I'm using my stamp and I want to keep changing the direction that I print it onto the paper so it's not the same every time. And I'm also overlapping it. Let me move this over here a little bit so you can see. So I'm also overlapping. I'm not going to put the stamp like cookies on a cookie sheet. I'm going to press and overlap the previous stamp and change the direction of the stamp so that it's different every time it goes down on the paper. And I can rotate the paper around and because the teal is opaque, it will go right over that dark anthraquinone blue. Also, I like to bring the stamps out into the margins of this paper because this paper is 9 by 12 and the plate is 8 by 10, so you're going to have a margin. And I just love using the paper all the full sheet of the paper. And sometimes these margins with the light blue lines can be a great uh, little bit of white with a light blue pattern. So I'm gonna always try to bring my stamp out into the margins so I can use the full sheet of the nine by 12 paper. All right, so this is a beautiful layered print now with the daisy stamp and the nice fine lines of the vulcanized rubber stamp on top of the fiddly ferns on top of the peacock pods. So I'm going to do the same thing over here on our second print that we've been creating. So I'm going to get a little bit more paint. And I'm going to press and print. Changing the angle of my stamp coming out into the margins, sometimes doing a secondary print so that it's a little lighter. Switching the direction of the paper. Switching the direction of the stamp. And here I'm building two beautiful blue sheets of collage paper at the same time with ghost prints and stencil and mask prints and this stamp. The key to collage paper is building layers, layers and layers. The more layers you have, the more interesting your paper will be. So there now I've got some beautiful layers. I really like the way the teal is standing up on this nice dark blue. It's also standing up on this one quite nicely. And I'm wondering if it would be interesting to go over this again with some of the deep dark blue on the stamp. So in order to get the teal off the plate, I'll just roll it out. I'll grab another sheet of my rice paper. and I'll print this teal. It will be a nice base layer for a future gel print. And it will also pull all the paint off my plate so that I can get back to a clean plate. Because of the smooth surface of this paper, it pulls all of the paint off the plate, every bit of it. It's nice and clean, and it's picking up everything that was left behind. So look at how interesting this is, just as a cleanup sheet, clearing everything off the surface of my plate because of that nice smooth surface of the rice paper. So now I'm gonna come back with this anthraquinone blue just for this uh, ghost print paper. 
And I wanted to put some of the stamps in the dark blue, especially in this lighter area. So I'm gonna ink up the rubber stamp and bring some dark paint back into the light blue. So that's standing out really nicely, especially in the lighter area. And I'm, again, I'm gonna bring it into the margin. And I'm building some beautiful layers with my blue collage paper. So that's about good on this one. So now we've got two sheets of really nice blue the ghost print and the initial print. I've got um, still got some paint, so I could take this cleanup sheet here, and since I've still got paint on the plate, I could apply some stamps onto the cleanup sheet and probably make a third sheet of nice blue collage paper that's slightly different. These are more subtle because there's not as much paint here, so the prints are softer. Being that this was a cleanup sheet, it's got some soft things going on. It doesn't have the bold pattern of the stencil or the mask. So this is an overall softer sheet of watery sort of blue paper. So it's definitely a more subtle print. This one is a, definitely a more subtle print, softer blue. So here we've got that dark blue. I'm gonna just put a little manganese into it. And in order to clean my plate, I'm gonna roll that out. And again, I'm gonna grab a sheet of the rice paper with the smooth side down, and I'm just gonna use this to clean the plate so that I can start clean in my next printing session. And rather than washing that paint off, I'm transferring it to this nice sheet of rice paper so it can be the base for something else in my future printing session. So there, I've cleaned it right to the clean and I've got this nice dark blue sheet that will become something else. And I'm going to do a little bit of splatter with the iridescent bronze. So how I like to do the splatter is I get a nice soft brush. This is a really nice soft brush. The bristles will hold a lot of water. I've got a container of water and I've got a second brush to tap against. And I'll use my gel plate as my palette. So I will... Put a little bronze onto the plate, put water in my brush, and then get a nice watery mixture of the bronze here. And I will tap it against my secondary brush and put it on top of the layers that we did on this print. Because it's metallic, it's gonna stand up over those darker lower layers and the teal. Bronze is a little bit greener than gold metallic. And because it's a little bit greener, I thought it would look nice with the blue. I'm tapping and moving around. And if you want more splatter, you can add more water. Bigger splatter. And again, I'm gonna try to come out into the margins so that they can be usable as well. I'm working on my non-stick craft mat table surface so I don't have to worry about splattering on it because when the paint is dry, it just wipes off. You can see some dry paint right here and I'm taking it right off with my fingernail. This is a great surface. You don't have to worry about making a mess. So that's the first print. So here is some beautiful bronze splatter on this multi-layered print. And you can see out in the margin, we've got some beautiful effects there where the bronze splatter is really bleeding into the paper. And we've got the stamps that we went out above and beyond the eight by 10. So this is the manganese blue base layer with the ultramarine blue Peacock Pod Stencil, then the Anthraquinone Blue Fiddly Ferns Stencil, then the Teal Rubber Stamp, and lastly, 
the splatter of bronze metallic. So now that's the first sheet. Now here is our ghost printed sheet and we're gonna apply that effect here as well. So I've still got the bronze here and I'm just gonna do the same thing. You can control your splatters into clusters. You can spread them evenly across the paper. If you stay in one place and cluster them and then move somewhere else and cluster them, you can sort of curate how you want your splatters, whether you want them evenly across the whole paper or you want them in small clusters. And if you change the amount of water, you will get bigger splatters or smaller splatters. But clicking your brushes together really allows you to control the splatter so that it's not all over your workspace. You can of course use a toothbrush with your thumb, but that tends to go everywhere. So this tapping against another brush really helps to control the splatter. And the gel plate makes quite a nice palette. All right, so now I've splattered all over my surface, but here's the ghost print. So it's got the same layers, only they were all ghost prints. So the Peacock Pods mask ghost print, the Fiddly Ferns stencil ghost print, the stamps with the teal, and then we came back and stamped over with the anthraquinone blue to bring a dark stamp back over the light stamp, and then the splatter of the bronze on top. So you really can appreciate the richness of the layers, the multiple layers and layers to create some beautiful blue collage paper on rice paper that will glue down beautifully and flat and has that nice smooth side that removes all the paint from the surface of the plate and does not tear because it's durable and rigid and is not gonna stick to this plate and tear. So I've got a little bit of bronze there. I'm gonna grab this cleanup sheet and just pull that off. It'll add a little bit of interesting metallic to this print, which can be a future base layer for something else. But we've certainly gotten two beautiful blue prints with multiple layers and opaque with translucent golden fluid acrylics. Thanks so much for joining me on Fridays for Tutorial Tidbits. It's always exciting to see the views go up and to respond to all of your comments and kind words. I wanted to remind you that if you're interested in more in-depth tutorial videos with multi-part series, as well as a bazillion background techniques and lots of other wonderful things, consider joining me on my Patreon page. Patreon is a monthly membership. It helps support your favorite working artist and it helps keep you motivated and inspired with new things every week, as well as you have immediate access to all the previous archive material. And there's enough material in my Patreon page to keep you busy for almost forever. So click on the link in the upper right hand corner of your video for more information about Patreon. And also, if you would like to receive tutorial tidbits as a blog post in your inbox every week with easy to follow product links at the bottom, please consider joining my newsletter. The Paper Paintings newsletter will push tutorial tidbits to your inbox in a format that's easy to follow and easy to click on for your product information. And that is also in the upper right hand corner. So thanks a bunch and I'll see you next week.